If you are looking for a backend C Sharp developer and you don't know where to start, then I've got something special for you today. I was looking for a backend C Sharp developer for one of my clients and I recorded a video where you can see exactly what I did, what kind of keywords I used and how I combined them together to a cohesive search. So listen to the video or watch the video, see what kind of keywords I used and replicate the search. So let's kick it off really quick. Um... The position is um, similar to what we already saw before, the senior backend uh, C Sharp engineer. So it's a software developer who builds some backend uh, uh, software, something with APIs, uh, with programming language C Sharp. So um, that's um, quite quite obvious by now. Uh, this one is in the United States, so I thought it could be nice uh, change because usually we focus on uh, Europe uh, to source candidates from. So um, uh, plus this uh, particular position focuses on uh, cybersecurity and uh, data uh, warehouse skills. So uh, it will be quite interesting to find people who could be great candidates for, uh, for, for this company. So let me zoom in and uh, we will go through just on a really high level who they are looking for, what is the company actually creating. So they create um, a solution that is uh, supposed to detect uh, threats. So as you can see, it focuses on threat detection, cybersecurity, which is booming these days. Uh, have you guys heard about all these uh, hacking attacks in, in Russia? So um, I guess uh, more and more companies will be looking for cybersecurity specialists. And that's the case of this uh, high-tech startup in the United States, uh, States as well. So they are looking for a senior backend C-sharp engineer. It's a startup. You know uh, that developers like working for startups. The uh, salary range is also uh, decent, you know, from 150 to 200. So, um, you know, it's, it's really the, the market rate in the United States. For, uh, for a senior person, it should be great. And it's fully remote as you can see right here fully remote but within the united states okay so i mean fully remote <laughs> with a little disclaimer within the united states so it's not fully remote from i don't know europe or from australia it is fully remote from the united states uh, what are the uh, must-have competencies well uh, of course it is the uh, experience with um, software development using c sharp at least five, six years. You can see this new field on the right-hand side in the sidebar, practical experience, at least five, six years of relevant experience, which in this case, relevant experience means software development with uh, C-sharp programming language. Um, and also since uh, they are building the uh, cybersecurity solution, they also require uh, experience with uh, data storage, data warehousing, so uh, you can see the other requirement. So uh, we will focus on uh, this uh, in a minute. So the data warehousing, we will explore a few tools. Uh, Hadoop is one of them. Elasticsearch is another one, but there are so many more data warehousing tools uh, that uh, the ideal candidate can have experience with. It does not have to be only Hadoop or Elasticsearch. Uh, understanding of uh, public and subscribe mechanism. This is uh, becoming uh, very popular in, uh, in IT, especially with uh, regards to companies that are preparing to scale. And apparently this is the case also of, of this company. They envision lots of uh, data to process, which means they uh, would like to uh, take advantage of this uh, architecture. So it's based on microservices where the uh, one service publishes some data and the other one consumes. So it subscribes to receiving the data. So that's the pops up mechanism, understanding of network programming. So uh, because they focus on cybersecurity, um, the ideal candidate should understand the uh, basics of, of network programming. So how do networks actually work? Uh, familiarity with building uh, pipelines and tools. Uh, so we are referring to uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines, but also since uh, the candidate should have experience with data warehousing, also with data pipelines. 
Okay, so um, that's that's really quick. Um, ideally, I mean, if we can find someone who has a threat detection experience, that would be awesome. We will use it as one of the keywords. Machine learning, I mean, these are really nice to have so experience with uh, eBPF, which uh, I really had to had to Google, like what is uh, eBPF? Like there are sometimes really these, uh, these, uh, these acronyms and all these, uh, um the shortcuts abbreviations which is uh, which is really crazy so it's uh, it's something that is used uh, in uh, in linux um like linux is one of the operating systems it uh, it is uh, a technology that is used within the operating system in in kernel which kernel is the the core of linux so um it's um like some extended like filter so the uh, f at the end means filter so i wouldn't go too deep i also don't know what does it mean and uh, we can try to use it as one of the sourcing keywords if it works great if not then we will skip it it's a nice to have anyway we'll focus on what what really what really matters what is most important competency the uh, startup experience would be nice to have um, also for other clients, uh, they usually prefer candidates who worked in startups because the atmosphere and the culture is different compared to uh, some uh, uh, corporates or agencies. Familiarity with graph, graph databases. I guess it comes with, uh, with data, with big data. Uh, the uh, graph databases are uh, not like relational databases. They are completely different. So you may know that relational databases are the most uh, popular databases that, that have been here for, for a long time, but they have certain limits and uh, graph databases are supposed to um, overcome those, those limits. So instead of just storing the data in a, uh, in a, in a table or a set of tables, they uh, connect the data as uh, um, like the data are connected with each other like a chain. You can you can imagine it like a like a spider web. So sort of instead of tables. Um, public cloud experience that's uh, quite common these days anyway. So uh, who senior doesn't really have cloud experience right in IT. Um, okay, so the uh, screening questions would be, do you have five or more years of experience with C-sharp? Yes or no. Do you have a high-level understanding of data warehousing? Yes or no. Are you familiar with uh, PubSub mechanism? Yes or no. Do you have a thorough understanding of network programming? Yes or no. Are you familiar with building pipelines and tools? Uh, yes or no. So, uh, so this will indicate if, if the candidate um, is actually a good fit to invite for a call to explore it further, to discuss uh, exactly the experience with pop sub mechanisms or what kind of data pipelines has the candidate created. But usually we use the pre-screening or self-assessment questions as, a, as an indication if it uh, is worth inviting the, the person for a call. Okay, so additional notes. And by the way, if you uh, if you work with um, with us as uh, as recruitment specialists or vendors, uh, recruit instantly slash vendors. Where is it here? Then uh, the last part is uh, is really relevant for you. I mean, these additional notes, which uh, for this uh, specific use case, um, but there are slightly different uh, terms slightly different um, um, like yeah, terms. So um, just you may, you may want to check it out. And if you don't work with us just yet, then uh, you can just go to recruit instantly slash vendors and you can uh, become a vendor and you can start submitting candidates to an opening such as this one, which especially if you are in the United States could be really handy. So now, how do we how do we take it from there? Here, when we look at the job requirement, we know C sharp obviously is one of the must have requirements. Uh, but uh, what else? How do we um, how do we identify the uh, ideal candidate on LinkedIn? What does it really mean? 
So let me open up uh, the notepad and we will think through some of the uh, stores and keywords. And by the way, you guys uh, may also um, uh, do it with me now. So uh, you can post in chat uh, while, while I'm typing and just think it, think it uh, how you would approach it. If uh, a client of yours shared this opening or even if we share this opening uh, with you without actually telling you these keywords, how would you approach it? What would be the, uh, uh, the search filter that you would try at first? What would be the Boolean? What would be the uh, keyword that you would start with at first? Okay, so um, think, think about it and I'll try to expand it meanwhile. So uh, obviously backend, that's clear, but not just backend, it could be also a, a back end and it could be also a back end with space. It should be senior, but in the United States, they also uh, usually shorten it to SR. So senior SR. Um, what else? Uh, C sharp, obviously, or .NET, or .NET. So these would be some keywords. Um, what else? Um, so ideally, someone who has been involved uh, with uh, cybersecurity. So cybersecurity or cybersecurity together. Uh, what else? Um, someone who has experience with data warehousing, but what does it really mean? What are the data warehousing tools? We can open up Google and just uh, uh, see the most popular data warehousing tools out there. And we can create a Boolean operator with different ones. So let's try it out. Then best data warehouse tools to explore, 25 best tools to learn, 12 data warehouse tools. As the form is unavailable. Oh, what happened? Opa. This form. Oh, okay, fair enough. Oh yeah, I was uh, changing something in the system and I forgot it would uh, stop working here. Of course, it's really good that you say it, Halina. Thanks a lot. I'll make an out to fix it. So data warehousing, what are some of the, some of the tools? Mm. So, so, so let's open up a few articles and you can really go through the same process. Uh, for example, Redshift would be one. So let's go with, uh, where is it? Here is, so let's say Redshift or Google has uh, Google Cloud, uh, I mean, BigQuery or what else? Uh, Snowflake or what else? Uh, Teradata could be, uh, that's a good idea or Microfocus Vertica. I'm not sure about that one, but DynamoDB certainly yes or Postgres, that's not really data warehouse. Amazon RDS is not really data warehouse. MariaDB, not really. DB2, yeah, that's from uh, IBM. Or Exadata sounds like yes, or Cloudera. Mm, I'm not sure about that one. Let's go through another article. Mm -hmm. Hello. Ah, this is too long article. Let's try another one. Redshift we have, BigQuery we have, Panoply. Um, Stitch, I haven't heard of this one. Blendo, oh, we've seen it before. So let's try. I mean, we don't have to cover all of them. Just, uh, just some of them, Tableau, Click, Oh, maybe click or tableau and let's go with one or two more looker sounds good 
or looker. Okay, so now we have a list of, of the uh, data warehousing tools. So let's try data warehouse or uh, DWH or data warehousing. So that would be good. And uh, we of course need someone with uh, cybersecurity, but what does it really mean? Do we have some additional keywords? Something that we could try? Uh, cybersecurity. Mm, nothing really comes to my mind. Do you guys have any idea how we could, how we could uh, find those excited about cybersecurity? Maybe we just need to open up a few profiles and then we will see those keywords. So let's leave it for later. So just on a high level, now this would be a decent start. So senior or SR, backend or backend or backend, but really it could also be a, um, it, network security. That sounds like a good idea, network security. or maybe at some point just security. Security compliance, information security, computer security. Mm, Julia, that's a good one. That's a good one. Security compliance, computer security. So we don't have to use all of them now. I mean, that's quite a lot of lines of booleans. I mean, now we are just brainstorming. So bring it on, feel free to share more. And then we will see what really works, what sticks, and uh, we will take it from there. Uh, so it's not just about backend. Um, it could be also a full stack. It could also be full stack. It could also be full stack. It could also be software engineer in the title. Software engineer, maybe systems engineer or security engineer. Probably, probably now when I think about it, security engineer, someone who right now has the title or maybe in the past had the title security engineer or maybe even system engineer or systems engineer. Mm, of course, software engineer or developer or whatever else. And uh, developer or engineer or programmer. Information security manager. Um, I'm not sure if it's not too far, Maria, because the uh, security manager may not be willing to start programming again. It really depends who or what would the manager do, but uh, still we are looking for someone who would be coding something on the backend. So, um, I mean, there are lots of, lots of uh, security managers out there, but they may not be coding, they may not write code. We are still looking for someone who is writing uh, code with C sharp. Mm -hmm. Where was it? Okay, so experience developing, running large scale uh, scale infrastructure. So um, yeah, yeah. Mm, the security manager, I wouldn't I wouldn't put there. Uh, senior SR, yes. Okay, so this would be a good start. C sharp or .NET or .NET. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Security. We can also try, for example, cyber security tools 2022. So what are the most popular tools now in 2022? <clears throat> Let's see if we can use some of them. Oh my, the, the list is too long. Kali, Kine, Abel. Oh my, 
that looks daunting. Let's skip it. Looks like the same article. Um, okay, we'll get to this uh, later, probably. Okay, so let's uh, now open up uh, LinkedIn Recruiter and we will see which of these keywords work. The uh, destination will be United States, of course. So that's a clear location would be USA. Now the job titles. So let's try with backend, but we can combine it with senior or SR. And backend or backend, let's see, because there are lots of people in the United States, right? So let's uh, be like snipers. Let's go after those who are most likely to be a good fit. So uh, not that many, but I may have some additional filter, obvious, uh, Agile, Jira, 5, 8. We can expand this from 5 to, uh, say, 15. So 4,500 people who are... Uh, senior backend developers or engineers. Okay, now we also need the additional keywords because we are looking for those who have the skill C sharp or .NET or .NET. So it's uh, one third of them. Okay, that's great. So this is the skill and now the keywords. So cybersecurity, network security, security compliance. Could we combine those two into one? That would be fun, right? So cybersecurity and one of these tools. Let's have it in one query. Let's see if it is not too long. So what do you guys think? 78 people, nice, nice. <clears throat> Senior software development engineer, Microsoft Visual Studio. So that looks like a .NET C Sharp developer, but he's in Indonesia, how come? Am I not sourcing for someone who is in the United States? That's uh, a bit strange. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try Tim. C Sharp, software engineer, collaborating with other engineers. Okay, okay. He was implementing security upgrades, uh, updates uh, to ensure conformity with OWASP security standards. Nice. I saw this OWASP somewhere, but I don't recall exactly what is it. Uh, OWASP, Open Web Application Security Project, non-profit non foundation that works to improve the security of software. Hmm, okay. OWASP standards, .NET framework. What about the uh, data warehousing? Do you guys see any? Uh, he was retrieving data from BigQuery. That's pretty good. So that's uh, that's actually quite good. I mean, the first profile and uh, it's a good fit. What do you guys think? It looks like uh, a decent fit to these requirements. He seems to be senior enough. Oh, let me just double check once again. He has lots of experience, but... He started in 2015, software developer, uh, worked remote, Lagos, Lagos, Nigeria, then Canada, Lagos. Oh, okay, so he may not be in the United States. Let's uh, try someone else. 
University of Pennsylvania, uh, developer, backend developer, senior full stack, eight years experience, but that's PHP, not the best fit. He will have C sharp somewhere, of course, but um, no, mm. doesn't sit well. Blockchain projects uh, doesn't look like really the uh, backend backend developer who focuses on C sharp. Senior, oh, you see, SR senior backend engineer, data engineer. That's a good keyword that we can also use, data engineer. <clears throat> but only because we are looking for someone who has understanding of the uh, data warehousing, data engineering, uh, data scientist, software engineer, but uh, still it's questionable if this person worked with C-sharp, was a researcher. No, I don't know. Doesn't look like a, an engineer. No, let's go through with someone else. Senior backend engineer at Anston Young, Florida, started just three months ago, but he was working on some cybersecurity project. Used AWS, also Redshift, DynamoDB, so both of those data warehousing tools. Also Elasticsearch. Oh, we don't have Elasticsearch in uh, this list. Oh, that's a blunder. Elastic search or elastic search with uh, space. Uh, but graduated only in 2019. Mm, so probably not enough uh, full time experience. Looks like, looks like. I mean, he finished 2015 in uh, India, I guess, and then moved from India to the United States, probably, probably. Well, it's it's an okay profile, but since he just started three months ago, we would most likely not approach him anyway. <clears throat> Six years experience, senior software engineer, backend API developer. Good, good, but we need someone who uses uh, C sharp extensively. And I don't see C sharp nor .NET. So now when I'm looking at it, maybe this is not the most efficient search because we saw already uh, a few profiles. I mean, he mentions .NET here, technical lead. Mm. Piloted SRE, implemented using containers.net, developed the GitHub actions. So maybe, maybe now when I see it, probably I, I haven't noticed the .net here at first. Mm, but it looked like he used C in Java before. But experience with large scale application, one half thousand APA calls per second. That's that's a lot. That's a lot. That's impressive, really. So maybe it would be worth really pinging this this person has experience with different uh, different uh, technologies. Probably I would keep him as a backup. Scott Scott Carlson. Mm, but he's looking for DevOps positions. So maybe not then. No, maybe not. Okay, let's go through someone else. Principal software engineer, passionate developer. Oh, no, 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 no. Has lots of technologies, lots, lots, lots. Mm. I mean, senior backend engineer, but we would need the uh, C sharp, ideally C sharp.net. So, you know what we could try? How about we try to put the uh, keyword C sharp.net to the uh, title right away? So, how about we try 
senior and let's have let's have a c sharp or dot net what would happen now in the current title senior c sharp or dot net but only in current title or maybe even in past that's okay actually even in the past it's okay so senior principal engineer senior dot net developer lead application developer at penny mac Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now at least we see that this person has really focused on uh, C sharp. Right away, you can see it. .NET Core, DynamoDB, so that's the data warehousing part. But what about the uh, security? All right, here, code designed as per PCI security standards. Security, security. Mm. I would probably remove the keyword security and only keep cybersecurity. Maybe we would get some better, better profiles. So let's see. Forty two. Senior .NET developer. That's good. That's good. That's decent experience with .NET. That's uh, 10 years. So that's good. That box is ticked. Uh, what about uh, data warehouse? White hat cybersecurity. White hat. That's a good keyword. White hat. We can add it to our list of uh, keywords to try. White hat, cybersecurity, that's good. Language Telungu. Do you guys know what uh, kind of a language this is? Telungu. Dravidian language. Oh my, that didn't really help. What is Dravidian? South Asia, Dravidian languages. Wow, that's probably the first time I uh, have noticed. Um, da, da, da. So this looks this looks good profile. Really, now when I look at it, what do you guys think? Decent experience with C sharp, three years experience, which means about time to change the job. Had experience with. Uh, with uh, cyber security, Oracle database as well. Oracle is used for data warehousing. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, so far, this looks like the best profile. I'll just copy the link so I don't forget. <clears throat> Let's try the other one. Uh, .NET C Sharp, Network Security, awesome, 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 full stack developer, data science manager, .NET developer, nice, nice, like this looks good. Now when I look at it, that looks decent. IBM DB2, good, network security, awesome, awesome. So I would go after him as well two and a half years, just time to change. So, I mean, uh, and that's a good sign. Now, when you go through the first profile, second profile, third profile, and they look okay, that means that we have good um, good search filter. Like we have the right mix of, of keywords. We don't have to go through too many profiles to actually find someone who would be a, a good profile potentially. And um, we can see that this profile matches from all three angles. First, C sharp experience. Second, the uh, cyber security, and third, experience with some of those data warehousing tools. Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana. Nice. 
that looks good, looks good. Would you guys approach it differently? Do you have any, any other idea? What could we try? How else could we find people who are um, backend, backend engineers or developers and uh, they uh, have experience with cybersecurity? Are there any other um, keywords that you would suggest? Full stack developer at Ford Motor Company. C sharp.net, that's good. C sharp.net, DB2, Oracle database. IBM DB2, decent, decent profile as well. DB2. Okay, so this is also a good profile now. So third profile out of uh, four that we looked at. What do you guys think? Any any further ideas, or shall we just uh, send a message to one of one of these people? For example, Harania in Austin, Texas, or who was the previous one? The good one, Naven Jolly, post developer data scientist enterprise information security well information security that would be also a good uh, keyword by the way information security oh we have it mm -hmm. good 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 julia already included that one thanks for that but I don't have it in this search. Aha. Uh -huh. So you mentioned it, and then I forgot to put it to the uh, Boolean search. So we can uh, just skip the computer security and plug this security compliance, information security right here. Oh, now that will be awesome. Ah, such a good search now. So much fun, right? And you guys are like, uh, this is boring as hell. Uh, Julia also uh, wrote, we should try different combinations of .NET. So what are they? .NET or .NET or .NET or .NET or C sharp .NET. Oh, awesome, awesome. That sounds good. Let's try it. So say C sharp or .NET or .NET. Okay, it's much better than what I had before. So let's put it to skills. We will go from 60 to 60. No, so it hasn't changed. Nice try. Probably if it was in keywords, then it would it would make some impact. C sharp or .net or .net or C sharp. <laughs> Let's see or C sharp. No, still 60. So um, probably we could try some other keywords related to cybersecurity instead of C sharp. That would maybe give us some some more some more profiles. Uh, we could try consultants to approach people who who are cloud engineers or cloud developers. Because the senior cloud engineer doesn't mean really anything. Is it's it's you know. Architected high scalability, managed uh, AWS, RDS, DynamoDB. Okay, so anyway, we had some good profiles. How do I go back now to, who was it? Vidar uh, or you, or even Naven Jolly? C 
senior .NET developer consultant, DB2, Kafka. DB2, DB2. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, these profiles look good. And you could you could really approach uh, uh, every other of them. But this would make sense as well. Network security. This is a decent one. Copy link. Okay, so let me write him a message. So, uh, hi, Naven. <clears throat> and now, how do we approach him? You guys tried this, uh, this as well. Uh, imagine you would be now really approaching him. It's a real job opening. They are looking for a C-sharp developer. We found him. He has experience with network security. He has experience with C-sharp.net. He has been at Ohio Soft for two and a half years. So probably about to change. So what would you write him? Let's take, uh, let's take a few minutes uh, for you guys to think it through. I'll also write it, but probably I'll just write it in some other um, page or, or tab so you don't get distracted too much. And then we can cross check it in five minutes, okay? So uh, take your time, think about it. How would you approach him? <clears throat> How would you make it uh, a bit more appealing? Not just like, hey, uh, we are looking for C Sharp developer. Here is the link to the opening. Which, by the way, now when I mention links, then uh, here is the link. Just if you would like to check it uh, yourself. And meanwhile, before I forget, I will also post the uh, booleans so that you you can use them. Okay, so you guys write, I'm writing as well, and we will debrief in four minutes. So what do you guys think? Ready or not? Let's post in chat. Are you guys ready? In five, four, three, two, one, and nothing. <laughs> so uh, I hope you used the, the four or five minutes to, to think it through because you know it comes with practice as uh, everything. So uh, I'll post mine right here. I wrote, uh, Hi, Naven. I noticed you specialize in network security. Very important these days with the recent hacking attacks. I work with an engineering team that's building an interesting cybersecurity product, a fast-growing startup, which will help companies detect threats faster and prevent damages. They use C Sharp, so I thought it could be interesting for you since you specialize in .NET. They are based uh, on the East Coast. Would you like to meet the team? I can arrange the intro. Just let me know. Would you like to meet the team to learn more about this opportunity? I can arrange the interview, just let me know. Sounds good, what do you guys think? And the subject, something catchy, network security or cyber security. cybersecurity.net, something that is not very obvious, something that just uh, triggers some more curiosity, cybersecurity.net, so what, like what, you know, imagine he receives a message with the subject cybersecurity.net, 
It's like, oh, wow, what is this? Clicks and starts reading. Uh, so, okay, so uh, do you guys have your messages also written? Have you had a chance to think it through? Or you were a bit lazy? Or you just leave uh, it for me to practice further? Anyway, anyway, so I'm sending this message. Let's hope he, uh, he replies. And uh, you guys may continue the search. Uh, screenshot. Okay, okay, Yulia, uh, Juliana. So um, uh, I'll post the message in chat, so you can you can uh, you can copy paste it to some other professionals that you find, and then submit them to uh, the portal, so we can uh, screen them, interview them, and submit to the client really quick. Okay, so sending. Sent. Not it. What happened? No, I didn't click send. Just now. Okie dokie. All right. Cool. Cool. So uh, find someone like Naven, someone who has the uh, cybersecurity on their profiles or similar um, words, similar um, patterns, uh, similar tools related to data warehousing, C sharp, obviously, .NET. So, um, I mean, there are lots of people out there. Uh, they may not have the keyword cybersecurity, but um, I mean, start with those who have and then expand your search. And then later on, just approach people who are backend, backend engineers. If you'd like to learn more about how to start recruiting IT candidates for international clients, how to get into the IT industry, and how to start working for international clients 100% remotely, then join the Tech Recruitment Academy. We've been helping people just like you to get into the IT industry, become confident recruiters and make more money in this IT recruiting industry. So join the Tech Recruitment Academy and I hope to see you inside some of our live training sessions.